In the spring of 2017, a team from Mount Scott Learning Center learned about engineering by studying bridges. We started with truss bridges. You can see what makes trusses unique. It's triangles. This bridge may look strong, but even a small load will make it do this. But add some diagonals, and now you can see the two triangles, and this bridge can hold over 400 pounds. Next, we built a three foot long truss bridge made of three quarter inch wood connected with nuts and bolts and reinforced with thin plywood panels. Okay. All right. So we've already drilled one of the holes. Right now we're trying to drill three more. We have the stop all lined up. So we want to make sure that all the holes on the other three are lined up with this one. So we keep the stop here and we have this clamp to hold these down. Okay. There, that's about good. Good, you got your safety glasses? Yep. These are fine. Now we drill. We turned the bridge upside down <clears throat> so we could attach the quarter inch plywood to the posts. We used a turnbuckle to tighten the steel cable. It's hard, I know. <laughs> you got it. Beautiful. Let's see. Okay, now, is the, uh, the cable loose? Yep. Yeah. Well, what do we do? Tighten it. Now, wait a minute. When you tighten the turnbuckle, yeah. it takes two people. Yeah. One guy, that's right. There you go. It's getting tight. Okay. Oh, it's a, one person holds the, the eye bolts, and one person turns the buck. There you go. Yeah. There go. I got this one so you can. Go ahead. Can't. Do we go until we can't? Because this thing. Well, is it loose. nice and tight? Yeah, it's super tight. Okay. Finally, we screw the three quarter inch thick plywood deck to the truss. Can you fit everybody? Yes, sir. Okay. When we finished, we decided to increase the live load. So I'm guessing six, six, seven hundred pounds. Yeah, not bad. Now so the cable underneath got real tight. This is a deck truss. The deck where the cars, trains, and people go is on top of the truss. If the deck goes through the truss, then we call it a through truss bridge. The Bridge of the Gods has both a deck and a through truss. The engineers at KPFF designed this pedestrian bridge in southeast Portland. Chris Pitt was the engineer in charge of the project. So the original design was different than what we have now? Yeah, the, originally there was a design um, that was shown to us. There was big eight foot deep concrete beams like you'd see for a big uh, highway bridge. And it was just going to span here and you know honestly be pretty ugly and it was also going to raise the because you can't go any lower you can see we're really close to the top of the train the tr you know the railroad doesn't let you get any lower than that so right. we have to put the bottom of that eight foot deep beam which would mean you'd be walking way up above our heads right now which means you'd have taller elevators taller stairs everything kind of um, just get bigger and more so we, we came up with this idea if you use a through dress now all of a sudden you're walking really close to the bottom. That means you just don't need so much of all that, you know, extra expensive stuff. In a truss bridge, all the weight is transferred to the ends of the bridge. Now, if we support the ends of the truss on piers, then the weight of the bridge and the load goes straight down to the ground through the supports. Arch bridges are different. The weight travels along the curve of the arch all the way to the end supports. This force tends to push the ends of the arch apart. Okay, so what kind of bridge is this, guys? This is a beam bridge. Right, it's held up by two posts, and the posts are in? Compression. Okay, 
Change it around a bit. So if you angle these, it's still going to be in compression because the deck or the beam is still pushing down on the two posts. Perfect. And if instead of being uh, straight lines like that, if they're angled like this, then we have an arch bridge. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be in compression. How many ribs? Two. And how many posts holding up the between the, the ribs and the deck? Four. Okay. So, all right, get, get rid of the, the, the stuff. Push the ends of the arch together, guys. One guy at each end. Push them together. Take a look and see what the reading on the load cell is. Uh, the reading zero. on the load cell is zero right now. That's what we want. Okay. Spread the ribs apart. So the only thing holding the ribs from spreading apart the ends of the arch is the tie. The tie. And right now the more you expand it, the more pressure is going to the more pressure on the tie will be exerted. Or more okay. tension on the tie. Yes. Well what's the what's the reading on the load cell now? Um seven point eight. So seven pounds, eight, eight ounces. Eight, eight ounces. So, so let's say seven and a half pounds. And the, uh, the live load is about 30 pounds of steel sitting on the deck. Okay, let's change, let's take the lo load off and we'll change things. Take the deck off. Right, okay. Deck. 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 Push the ends of the arch together. All right. Push the end. Check the load cell. Is it zeroed out? Seven ounces. Close enough. Okay. Do it. Jason, live load. Come on, two, two. Okay, slow. Jared, release your end. Yeah, I can't bring mine out anymore. I know. How are we doing? Okay. What's the load cell reading? Uh, Thirteen two. Thirteen two. Okay. And before it was seven pounds. Okay, so the lower the arch, the more tension is going to be on the tie. Then we began to build the eight-foot arch bridge. Each rib is made up of three-quarter inch marine grade plywood and one inch thick cedar. Um, is it still hanging over? Um, I wouldn't care. Yeah. Guys? Did, it's all good. Is the cedar hanging over the plywood everywhere? In this side, no. Well, is it is it hanging over every place else? Yeah, everywhere else is yeah. fine. Okay, if that's just a tiny bit, we'll sand that out. Okay, clamp it up. Um, this one just clamps by Good. Okay. Check it again. Check the overhang all around, guys. It's good on this side. Good Tucker, how's it? How's it? Where you are? Yeah. Oh, let me double check. No, let's okay. Go. Jared. Um, good. Yeah, good. Okay. Now we can tighten up the clamps. More. Well, if they're tight. Yeah, they're, they're tight. They're tight. Okay. What are you doing, Jesse? The Exterior glue. Okay, good. Make sure you get everything's got to have glue on it. Okay. Okay, Andrew, take that spreader away. Uh, okay. What's next? Um, we put the pieces on. Piece of cedar on. Go ahead. Got the lines. Everything lined up. All uh, right. Just now, before we put the clamps on, just press down for a few minutes to keep it from sliding around. Just hold it down there. Good. Good. Push it. Tighten up this. Okay, that's that's the best we can do. Okay. For my video, so I can show on YouTube. 
How's it look, guys? It's overhanging now. Good? It's all good. And then? No, that, that's good. That's good. Right. Sure. Yeah, okay. That's, well, I'm glad you're making sure. Good. Now, don't make the clamps real tight. Let it, let it set up for a minute or so. Then the glue starts to harden and it'll prevent everything from sliding. So we'll wait, wait a couple of minutes, then we'll tighten them down. Everything over here? Good over here? It's still overhanging? Mm -hmm. Good? All right, slowly tighten up the clamps. Where's Jesse? Well, it helps if you have the clamps. Jesse Wicks. Okay, okay. We use planes and a spoke shave to trim the cedar flush to the plywood. Okay, and uh, so Jesse, originally when we glued everything together, we had the cedar stick out, overhang on the plywood. And how did we get it, try to get it flush? Uh, we planed it with the planes. Well, he's got the, Andrew, let's see the plane. Plane. Plane, do the little work there, let's see. Okay, do it on the edge. Okay. Like that, that's good. Keep going. And Jesse, you've got a spoke shape. Ah. Right? Right. Okay. And then, so we got as close as we could with the plane and the spoke shape, and then we used what? This router. Let's see. Hold it down there uh, on, on the edge, sideways. Oh, this yeah. Good. Let me take a look at that. So that, we used the router and we got everything nice and flush. Good. Okay. So Jason, what do we got here? Um, we have three ribs that are made out of plywood and cedar and we're attaching them at the ends with this board and with these boards. Okay. So at the end we're going to have a, hold on, we'll have a two by six uh, pressure treated, right? And then over here, those diagonal pieces also pressure treated. We're going to screw those down to the cleats and that'll make it real strong. Okay, Alex, you're pre-drilling. Andrew, put the screw in. Okay, pre-drilled it. Who's got the screw? Go ahead, Jared. Now on the other side. You don't have to go all the way down, Jason. Okay, Jesse, you, you ready? Tucker. Yeah. Good man. Here we go. Boom, we're is the, is the overhang pretty much the same on both sides, Andrew? Yep. Good? All okay. The way through. All right, keep going. Oh, she has it. Gee, sorry. Yep, it's alright. Okay. Okay, Jesse, you're up. Now we added the tie. 
One eighth inch steel cable with a turnbuckle. Okay, number four. Watch your fingers. Okay. Good. Open up. Let's see how it looks. Okay, we're going to do one more on the part that you didn't swedge. Okay, what do we do now? We are going to... Go ahead, go do it. Okay, put the eye bolt in there. Now hold up the... What are we going to connect that end of the cable to? Turnbuckle. Where's the turnbuckle? Somebody? Come on. No, no. That's it. So we're going to connect it to that turnbuckle. Yeah, we're going to have to... Um, yeah, don't, don't worry about the, the, nut, the nut reel. Just put it on loosely for now. Okay, because what do we have to do now? Uh, get to here and then... Through the end of the, of the turnbuckle. It's way too long, right? Yeah. So, so let's cut it... About up here. Well... Right where you hand, right there. Okay, tape. And why do we put the tape on? So that the wire doesn't spread. Right, so when we cut it, it doesn't spread about too far. Good. Take off the tape. What do we do now, Andrew? Now, we're going to put it through the... Through the what? We're going to put it through the turn... Oh, do we need a thing? Yeah, okay, we need what, a sleeve. Yeah, we, all, we need lots of things. What, what do okay. we need? First, we need a sleeve. A, sli uh, a sleeve? Sleeve. And a... Thimble. Th thimble. thimble. Okay, where's the thimble? Okay. How do we get the thimble onto the end of the turnbuckle? Well, show me here. Let me come over here. Let me see it. You gotta take the thing out. This. Take yeah. the bolt out. And it's not hand tight. That is exterior. Let's go. That should be fine for now. Huh? That should be fine for now. I want you to twang it when the load is on. See if it makes a difference. All right, ready? Go. Everybody. Come on, guys. We did this together. I don't want to fall on me. No promises. Ah, uh, yes. Much tighter. Much tighter? Yes. Super loose cable. Okay. Arch bridge. Try it again. Tighter? Yeah. Much tighter. Okay, now you get on. Yeah, we, too bad we don't have another three, four hundred pounds. Yeah. Yeah, because this could probably hold a lot more. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I can jump on. I'm not saying I'm three or four hundred pounds. Come, Come on, on, Willie. I can totally Come add on. to the pile. Come on. Come on, Willie. Yeah. A little farther in there. There you go. That's perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. There you go. Now check this out. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's I, I, super I tight. Wait, wait. Do, once more. Do it again. Super tight. Oh, I thought he meant my... Good. Okay. Okay. Now, and I tell you what, look at the ends. What I want to see is when we really put a lot of weight on it, if the ends of the arch are going to spread apart. So you, you watch one end of the bridge over there. Okay. No, go with the, all the way at the end. Uh, over there. Over there. So at the count of three, everybody just jump up and down a little bit. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Did it move? A little bit? Yeah. Okay. That was supposed to move. Yeah, it did. Okay. We arranged with RH Construction to take a field trip to one of their building sites in North Portland. The 
kids got a good look at the different jobs and careers available to them in the construction industry. Laborer, carpenter, electrician, and of course, rigger and crane operator. So this is a hammerhead crane, about 160 foot, 160 feet of boom. And uh, all the way at the tip. We get about two tons all the way at the tip of the crane, right where he's at now. He can't do much more than that. Um, back here at the end, you got between six and four tons, depending on where you're at. Although we're not going to be picking any six ton rows right there. See the huge stack of counterweights in back there, the big concrete blocks. And I don't remember the weights on them. But uh, those are actually just sitting there. They're not bolted in or anything. And that crane right now, the has all of the weight in the back. The cranes are in almost zero danger of ever falling over forward, and it's because of the amount of counterweight required to put two tons out here at 165 feet. You need to overcompensate by at least two fold back here, so that's always back there. The project was underwritten by RH Construction and KPFF Engineers. It would not have succeeded without their financial contribution as well as their commitment to supporting STEM education. And the program would never have gotten off the ground were it not for the support and dedication of the science teacher, Willie Wilson.